All right, so we'll get started here. Um, you know, and and I think uh, you know, first of all, you know, it's 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 nice for uh, you know, thanks for thanks for joining us tonight. Um, you know, it looks like we have over two two hundred people here. You know, it's great that you guys are keeping this as a as a priority, um, the the financial side of the business because it is it is incredibly important. Our goal here tonight is to try to pass some of the info over to you guys, um, especially things that maybe aren't talked about a lot, um, things that have a, a big influence in regard to the financial health of your business. So that's what we're going to try to do tonight. Um, so we have Carly here. Um, many of you have probably seen her um, in the Facebook groups and stuff like that. She's, yeah. she's the CEO, co-founder co of Cycle CPA. Um, yeah, and thank you, Joe. Yeah, I'm excited to to join you all here, and uh, you know, provide some insight on on cash flow management. <laughs> yeah, and and just a just a quick note too for for anyone that is not aware, I see a lot of our clients here. Um, but you know, if if you haven't heard about us or if you don't know much about us, we um, do anything from uh, CFO work all the way to um, bookkeeping services specifically for for the green industry so yeah. um that's that's pretty much what you know you know our our background there and you know so i know that we're going to touch on you know cash flow management and some best practices but um, really one of the um, important things to remember um, is that ultimately making that cash flow that starts with a healthy profit, right? And that that's something that that you want to work on optimizing first. And we're going to go into the specifics of why profit is really a a, a driver behind um, a company that has great great cash flow. Also, we're going to focus on some of the capital, right? That a business needs in their day to day operations to operate. And then we're also going to talk about, um, you know, the different, um, levels of cash that, that you may have within your business and even going into some of the cash flow forecasting items as well. And there's, there's two main drivers when it, when it comes to profit, right? You're, you're, you're looking at things like, um, pricing and volume. You know, ultimately, if if you're not happy with with the profit that you're making, it it generally comes down to these two items. Now, the 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 current market when it comes to the green industry is, um, and I'm sure I don't have to tell any of you, but you know, labor shortage, right? And the only way for companies to combat that, you know, not having the labor to do the amount of work, is to ultimately price higher, right? That's that. Also paired with the fact that material, fuel, re recruiting prices all going up, right? So this is all pointing toward toward a direction. And I hope that you guys have some sort of plan when it comes to increasing pricing um, for 2022, if you haven't already sent out those letters. Um, then we're also talking about um, a, a crucial thing, volume, right? So you can you can price as high as the market will allow you to then it comes down to you and your company in how efficiently you run the operation right so looking at different ways to um, become more efficient and, and and optimize the employees that you have and the equipment and the resources um, and then ultimately try 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 to complete these jobs in the allotted amount of time um, so those are the two main drivers, right? And you want to also keep track of some of those hidden costs, right? Which I which I listed right there to the to the right hand side of the screen. Um, these are these are all main um, things to 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 focus on. Um, and just just remember, you know how profit really is essential, and that's the start of a company that's going to have great cash flow. Yeah, and one more thing to add before you move on that. Um, one of your hitting costs were uh, too much inventory. And we see like 
the trend in um, increasing in inventory uh, for landscaping businesses just because of the material shortage. Um, you're buying a lot up front just to make sure that you have enough to cover your, your basis uh, when you do have those jobs. And so you, uh, something we haven't like thought about before is how much does it cost me to store those um, inventory items, those materials? And so that's also something that should be factored into your estimating um, as well. Yeah, and it, it, it also <laughs> goes along to the point which we're gonna touch on later when it comes to maintaining cash flow throughout the entire year so that you're at the point maybe in the beginning of the year where you can make some of those large purchases of materials up, up front in bulk to save on costs. So, um, and also going off of net profit, um, I think it's important to note, and I think it's, I think it's very, um, it's an interesting part of the cash flow com conversation when it comes to, um, you know, I know a, a lot of you guys want to grow, right? And there's different methods, you know, whether it's marketing, you know, great, you know, we're doing marketing, the business grew by 50% or, um, you know, we're getting this new salesperson this year, we're really expecting an increase in revenue. We got a new CRM, right? Um, those are great, but, you know, and, you know, we're, we're expecting that increase in revenue. Now, I, I challenge you guys this year in 2022 to instead um, measure the effectiveness and how well of an investment those items are for your business, instead of measuring that against revenue, measure that against net profit. Because then that's going to force you to hold yourself accountable to being efficient. An increase in revenue, and many of you know, right? Uh, the top line revenue, it doesn't tell the whole story, right? So don't, don't use that as really something to um, look at, you know, in regard to measuring some of your efforts because um, all, all revenue is not created equal. <laughs> so, um, you know, we can, uh, it's, it's about creating revenue efficiently. So that's, that's definitely something to, to, you know, think about as well moving into 2022. Yeah, so let's get started on some definitions here before we get into, into it. Um, so current assets, uh, this is on your balance sheet side. And current means that you, you will have it for the next 12 months um, and not afterwards. So uh, that includes your checking, your savings accounts, balances at the moment, um, accounts receivable is a big one because accounts receivable is uh, what you have performed services on and you've invoiced uh, those those clients out, but they haven't paid you yet. So those invoices are waiting to be paid. And so that's why they're in your current assets and your balance sheet. You know, you'll get paid for those within the next 30, 60, 90 days. Um Part of your current assets is also your prepaid liability. So if you paid your insurance up front for the year and you haven't used it up yet. Um, <clears throat> and so what these current assets are on the balance sheet, they're, they, um, they really are used to fund the day-to-day -day business operations for ongoing operating expenses in your business. So it's a very important line item to look at in your balance sheet. Uh, <clears throat> because in essence, it's really forecasting out, okay, what, what am I going to receive within the next 30, 60, 90 days here, right? Um, and so with that, uh, there's also current liabilities. So these are items that you have, you're going to have to pay out to vendors, the state, different things like that within the next 30, 60, 90 days as well. So that includes accounts payable, items like payroll payable, sales tax payable, all of these items that are coming due. And it also includes the short-term portion 
of your long-term liability. So if you have a truck loan, right, that you're paying off over five years, you know that um, that's on your long-term loan. Um, but the short-term portion, what you're paying out monthly this year, that's also current, if that makes sense, that portion of it. So in essence, it's forecasting out what you're going to have to be paying out in cash within the near future, your current liability. So you see how you have to look at both because it's forecasting cash in and cash out on the balance sheet. Yeah, and and these are two um, important definitions that kind of set set the stage here for for some of the other ratios and KPIs that we're going to dive into. Yeah, so uh, there are certain liquidity measures that you can calculate using your balance sheet for the business, and um, you can calculate your working capital. So working capital. Um, is the amount um, that is used of capital used within the day-to-day -day operations of the business. Like I said, so that's your current assets minus your current liabilities, right? And then you will have, um, you'll have to generate enough cash flow to cover your short-term liabilities and your payables. So you can measure that ability within your business by calculating this ratio, you can do current assets, divide that by your current liabilities. And so, again, remember when we said current assets, your checking, savings accounts, um, balances, your AR over what you're expected to pay short in the short term. And so what, that's, it, what this uh, formula is able to tell you is, are you going to be able to cover those upcoming liabilities? Are you going to make payroll on time, sales tax payments on time, all of those items? And it tells you how well you're going to be able to do that. Um, so that ratio for the industry, it's at 1.45 for the green industry. Um, if you're below that number, it means that your cash flow is, um, it's, it's lacking a little bit and... <coughs> In order to improve, you need more predictable cash flow. So maybe offering uh, more predictable uh, services such as maintenance or something like that, um, where your cash flow is going to become uh, come in more predictable than it is right now. So what does 1.45 mean? It means that your current assets, checking, savings, AR, is going to be able to cover your current liabilities 1.45 times over. So if you if you're below one, that means that you can't even cover your liabilities. You're not even going to be able to do that. So um, it's important to calculate this often to see um, where you're where you stand. Yeah. And and this is a common ratio within the balance sheet. Um, so thank you, Carla. And, you know, go, going off of working capital, um, I think that, you know, what, what we want to dive into next here, right, is really kind of dissecting that, right? You know, looking at the capital that's needed to operate the business, um, right, which is, which is ultimately after you make your profit um, from, from your profit and loss statement, as, as, as many of you know. Um, and I think we'll, we'll start by you know, separating things that are influenced more by the market versus things that are more controllable by you as the business and the business owner. So more specifically, looking at separating cash from the working capital calculation and ultimately when you come up with the net, net working capital. Um, and what, what that helps to do um, is it, it helps to, um, you know, make it more clear um, in, in regard to if a business owner wants to have a, a, like a large amount of cash in the business, it's a lot harder to dissect and see how well 
they're doing on accounts receivable AP and and some of those um, activities that that influence cash flow right because you have that huge amount of cash you may buy this huge building or whatever you guys whatever you guys decide to do I want to separate that completely from the from the capital that's actually required to fund the business right that that is more influenced by by the market um, and something to also understand right is that um, when it when it comes to spending down cash um, you know you want to be careful right we're not software companies <laughs> um, you shouldn't be burning cash right Th this is something where um, if you are in a in, in a tough cash flow situation, or if you're taking out a line of credit, think of those more as short-term options, right? Um, there really shouldn't be any long-term aspect of that. Um, you want to work on improving your cash flow, improving your capital structure in the way that you are um, operating, right? So, and then going off of working capital, all of that capital that's built to um, help you operate the business that's separate from the cash, as I mentioned, that, that, that we're going to separate from that and what we call like infrastructure capital. So some of your real estate or equipment, um, you know, those, those aspects are more related to the return that you're getting on your money, which we will dive into later. And this is this is a very key key slide here, um, and I'll start by explaining over here to the left. Um, it's basically simplified profit and loss, right? So um, for 2020, you had your revenue of three three million. You have your direct labor, materials, other direct expenses. Ultimately, all of this is your cost of goods, right? Um, or a, this is above your gross gross margin line here. Um, and then you have some of your overhead expenses like your administrative labor, marketing, um, you know, rent payments, other other overhead expenses. And and then you're left with your net income, right? Which which I I had mentioned before, which most of you are familiar with, right? What what net income is and um, and I know you know it's it's you know very uh, you know, it's not not new to say that, you know, you want a high, high net income, right? But we'll show you how it relates now to some of those balance sheet items that where you guys can look at this and it will show you, um, you know, <clears throat> what kind of adjustments you may need to make in your company to make sure that you're maintaining the amount of cash levels that that you want. Yeah. So we. We, like we spoke about before, working capital, and I was saying that includes your checking, your savings account balance. Here, we're not going to look at your checking and savings account. We're going to look at the other items that are left in current assets because the goal is to have the business operate with its own inflows and outflows on by itself. Like, So <clears throat> I'm going to explain here um, on the, on the right-hand side. Uh, the chart, working capital, and what you should include in there. So these are balance sheet items, again, current assets and current liabilities. Specifically, you want to pull out accounts receivable, 250000 and that percentage to revenue. Inventory, which is materials um, that you have in hand that you haven't used yet to render services with. And then if you have any work in progress, which are... Uh, services that you're rendering at the moment but have not been completed yet. So that's that is the items from current assets that you want to pull out of your balance sheet. And, and then and and that's in um, that's in green as well. Yep. Yeah. And then we're going to go to the yellow section. That's your current liabilities. Specifically, you want to pull out for this calculation your accounts payable. Um, sales tax pay payroll payables, all of the payables, the short-term payables that you have, deferred revenue, 
which is revenue that you haven't earned yet. And then your short term loan payments, which again, like I said before, is a short term portion of the payments that you're making every month on your truck, let's say for the next year. Right? You want to add all of those up here, you're going to you're going to take your total for your current assets and you're going to subtract your total for your current liabilities and you're going to get your net working capital. So for this business, it's 210,000. And so 210,000 as a percentage of revenue is 7%. Yeah. And just to, just to make sure everyone gets it. So, you know, it's, it's basically taking, um, know the the green items and 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 then you subtract that um from from the orange so uh you know that as as Carla mentioned now now your net working capital um is is seven percent and as i mentioned in the other slide this is not accounting for <clears throat> cash cash right so right. um this is truly the capital right that is can is more um, determined by, by the market. Yeah. And then, so one, one thing I want to mention is that for, for this business, net income is 17%. So, and their networking capital is 7%. So if their networking capital is less than their net income, their net income is higher. That means that this business can fund itself. Yeah. And that's what so, you're looking for. Yeah, and 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 this is why I had mentioned earlier how making a net profit that that net income is where everything starts. It's it's like the engine of of the business, right? That's that's where your cash flow starts. So you can see in this example, if all of a sudden you start to make a net income of seven percent, and then it drops below, now you as the business owner have to come up with cash in order to fund your business. Yep. And so, this yeah. is why sometimes in, in businesses, um, and we see this with um, a good amount of businesses within the green industry is sometimes that number, sometimes your, your net income does dip underneath your net working capital at times. Um, and then what, what ends up happening um, is, or, that's when you see some businesses where they are able to grow and then they have to stop growth, wait until they have the cash and then start growing again, that sort of stop and pause, which is fine. Right. But it's, um, you know, I think that, that this is a great, um, the, these are great KPIs to look at, right. Cause it, it gives you a very clear view at, um, at numbers that will influence cash flow, um, you know, because I know that part of part of the issue a, a, a lot of the times is um, you kind of look at your bank account and you're like, why, you know, I'm making that an in income. I even, you know, I'm growing in revenue, uh, but there's no difference in my bank account, right? And and you can see in this example, if your accounts payable, um, you know, an accounts Accounts receivable. Um, well, I should say in this example, if your accounts receivable goes up, how how much of an effect that has um, on that cash that you're going to be able to retain? Um, so um, this is this is definitely something you can you can take a look at. Um, you know, and we we recommend you know um, really really monitoring this um, because ultimately you you want to build a business that can run on its own, right? That doesn't need cash to operate. So, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, this is, this is a huge slide for, for what we want to get across today. Yeah, and somebody asked um, that, how do you calculate percentage to revenue? So if you, if you have an accounting software, you can pull up your profit and loss as a percentage of revenue and it'll just calculate it for you. But it's, it's just, for example, if I wanted to calculate marketing here, 
I would take the $90,000 and divide that by $3 million, and that gives me the percentage. Yeah, and, and someone had also mentioned what a, what a, what a KPI is. It's a, it's a key performance indicator. It's basically a metric. So any financial metric, like revenue or inventory. Most profit, yeah. It's, it's literally just the metrics that are key, that are important, right? So, um, all right. And it's also important to notice that, um, you know, static information, right? So this, this information only tells a little bit of the story, right? And ultimately there, there's a lot of power in being able to look at trends over time. For instance, we, we, we know that it's a good thing for net profit to exceed your net networking capital percentage, as we mentioned before, right? Because because then, then that means that you don't have to really add cash into the business in order for it to operate. Um, but in this example, you can see that um, even though your networking capital percentage is above your net profit, which is what you don't want, because that means that you're funding the business with your with with cash that it can't fund itself. You you can see that the trend is really decreasing. So you can definitely um, this company is almost in a better position than than this company within the next six months, I'd say, because of that trend that you're able to see from the historical information. So it's it's great to look at static information, but also combine that with with with, with some of the trends as well. Yeah, yeah, and the trends again you can pull as a percentage of income um, on QuickBooks and then pull for for a couple of a couple of different months and then see how that percentage of income fluctuates um, from month to month. Absolutely, um, and I know in the fit. If, if anyone's in our Facebook group, um, Landscaping Accountant, they had noticed Carla's Jeopardy question the other day. Um, and this this has to do um, with, uh, um, <laughs> with, with that question, right? And there's two f fundamental um, business models, right, within the green industry. Uh, you know, you have the re recurring work and you have the one-time work. Each model requires different levels of capital in order to operate the business. And what that creates, right, is a different need for profit. So a company that re requires the business owner to purchase a large amount of materials up front and not get paid by the customer yet, that company will require more profit to, to kind of offset that. So, um, this is this is something that you want to consider, right? When it comes to working capital and some of those and those couple of slides before, when you're you're looking to maybe acquire a company, you're looking to expand your company. Because um, if you're if you're looking to expand your company and you already know that your cash flow is low, maybe you try to make an approach with your next venture right where you know that maybe it's not necessarily the most lucrative thing right but it it'll provide you with that cash flow even potentially year-round cash flow right so those are the things to to consider and this this goes off of one of the points that i mentioned before of how some business owners they have really an excessive amount of um, capital <laughs> reserve within their business, um, which I guess is a good problem to have, but um, I'm, I'm going to go over some of the, some of the negative aspects of it. Um, because I guess to, to start, um, it's important to first notice that money invested in a business, in a privately owned business is, it's the best investment that, you can make right right now yeah you can invest in real estate invest in the stock market those are investments where you can make you know return but it's not going to be as high as what you can make in a privately owned business and i think that's important to understand and 
that's what we recommend to to first go to if it's if it's possible um you know if it's if it's possible to invest your money in into the business then do that right um look at how your net profit you know is increasing in relation to that as i mentioned earlier as well right not not just looking at the revenue you know look at the actual return that that you're getting on on your capital um and I see that there was a question, you know, what, what is considered um, excessive? You know, I've seen people say anywhere between two to three months of operating expenses. So looking at some of your overhead plus your direct labor, um, you know, I don't think that you should really need more than that. I, I think that's a pretty good benchmark there. Um, and the lower you have in the business, the better return that, that you have for your business. Because the way to think about it is that, you know, yeah, it's it's excessive reserve um, capital, but at the end of the day, the return that you're making on your business, you have to include that that capital in there as well. So, um, the other negative part about that, and this is why I, I I separated cash from the working capital calculation, is because if a business owner has a ton of money, a ton of um, excess cash right and they have staff doing accounts receivable accounts payable and they're growing in revenue as i mentioned right <laughs> um it becomes the there and and this is what we see a lot it it may cloud some of the inefficiencies that may be going on right because people are comfortable because there is a lot of cash in the bank but um really you know, you're, you're not able to, um, take, take, take a close look into, um, some of those inefficiencies. Um, so that's why, you know, as I mentioned, we, we try to take cash out of the working capital calculation. Um, you know, when, when we compare it, that, that net to net, net profit, um, you know, and more, <clears throat> more profit <laughs> can actually, um, make more room for possible cash flow inefficiencies. You know, like I said, people people get complacent. Um, a company grows in revenue double the size, and there there's no increase in cash. You know, those are issues that that we see, right? And it's important for people to um, keep that attention um, and try to separate some of those things. Like if you purchased a large building or that maybe doesn't necessarily have to do with the business, or if you have a lot of cash in the business, um, don't let that cloud you to what I, what's actually happening, you know, and, and the capital that's actually needed to operate the business. Yeah. And um, if you do have, you know, excessive cash by the definition Joe gave you, then it's time to look into other investments for that cash. And um, in our last webinar, I went over how to calculate the return on investment um, if you're looking to invest in different projects, right? So, um, but you can check that out on our YouTube cycle CPA on how to calculate that. Yeah. And st stay hungry, just like Peter said in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I know we, we touch on accounts receivable, um, for, for those that aren't too familiar with the term, it's basically the money that people owe you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, you know, for, for some of the, um, business models out there, right. You, you may get paid maybe half up front, right. Before a job. And it's, it, it's fantastic. Right. But don't let that give you um, or or make, make you comfortable to the point where you're not concentrating as much on getting that second payment. That second payment is just as important as that first payment. Um, so don't don't fall behind on either. <laughs> um, and your team, so whether it's you um, or whoever handles accounts receivable, yeah, it's great that they're doing accounts receivable, but what do you expect of them? specifically make sure that they're aware of that make sure that they know how their position is incredibly important to the rest of the operation um, 
And that that clarity that goes with the customer as well. Make make sure that the customer un- understands the payment process and utilize technology, right? Um, be be proactive about things. So build in those automated reminders and do it the old fashioned way where, where you pick up the phone and, and call, um, you know, if, if, if the payment is late. Um, yeah. So yeah. And it works. <laughs> just how your field employees have some direction from you in the morning and they have, um, they have tasks that they need to do every day. So should your accounts receivable, accounts payable, your administrative staff, they should have their own CRM where they keep track of, okay, I pulled an AR report. I called those um, clients um, on, on our AR list. I have an update for all of them. Um, I, I send them reminders. Um, you know, we're, we're expecting to get this in cash inflow within the next three days. We can expect, um, you know, $5,000, whatever it is. So that way they always keep you updated. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's important to, to keep them in track on track. Yep. Yeah. And so, and as, as the business owner, a way you can kind of monitor this and I'm going to go over some other things too, but you, you can look at your accounts receivable aging report. So the aging report literally shows you what, what is due, um, now what is due, um, or what is, what is past due, um, 30, 30 to 60 days, what is past due 60 to 90 days. Right. So, um, and then you also have your accounts receivable detail reports, which shows the specific customers and the specific details. Um, and you know, if you work with certain clients that are, um, fortune 500 companies or, commercial clients that um, just don't pay you on time, it's, it's not scalable, right? Um, I think that's a way you should think about it. If I multiply this client by, by 100, would I be able to operate my business? Would I be able to pay my employees? You can't get terms on paying your employees. You have to pay them. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can't um, wait. You know, and um, I think one of, one of the other things, um, you know, you, you want to get paid, right. Um, by, by your customers as close as possible to when you have to pay your employees to work and, and, and purchase the materials. You don't want there to be much of a gap there. That that's a really important point. So, um, try to, try to focus on that. You know, if I get, if I perform this project, um, you know, make, make sure that you're getting paid, you know, as close as possible to when you have to pay for, for the materials. And here's, here are some other things about some of the accounts receivable KPIs. So looking at the, the average collection days. So how many days does it take to, to, to collect, right. For, for your average customer, um, green industry average is around 22 days. And you, you get this by doing the total accounts receivable from your balance sheet divided by um, sales divided by days in the period. Um, so really you want to strive to be under 30, but you know, ultimately at industry average or under is ideal. Um, and here's a graph too. Um, so you can also look at AR as a percentage to revenue. Um, so in, in this example, you can see that in 2021, um, you know, where the revenue, where the accounts receivable, it has slowly been increasing. So as the owner, you can look, look at this and whether you're doing the AR or your, your employees, um, it's a, it's a good metric just to, um, you know, look at monthly or, um, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. You want this to be a decreasing number. Um, you want it to be less. Yeah. Not not increasing like in this graph here. Absolutely. Okay, so um, accounts payable. These are um, 
what you're going to pay out to your vendors. So if you go to site one, you know, things of that nature, you have a trade credit with them. Um, and so it's, it's really important to build relationships with your vendors early on, because um, if you have strong relationships with, with your vendors, then um, you'll be able to leverage those relationships. Um, and <clears throat> what I mean by that is, uh, let's say that, you know, you calculate your accounts receivable days and you, you come up with 22 days, which was the industry average, right? And then you can calculate your accounts payable days by using the formula here below, which is um, total supplier purchases, uh, divide that by beginning accounts payable plus ending accounts payable, divide that by two. Um, and let's say you get, you get this and you get 15 days. So what does that mean? That means if your AP days are lower than your AR days on in within 15 days, you're going to pay out money to your vendors. So there's going to be cash outflow sooner than your cash inflow, which is going to be at 22 days. It's going to be after. So that means you're going to outlay cash before you get it in. So maybe what you can leverage with your vendors is, hey, um, hey, listen, can I extend my 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 payment terms to 30 days? Maybe you can pay them within 30 days. So that way you beat that. You get your cash first, 22 days, and then you pay your vendors, right? That's what you want to see. You want to see that you receive your cash first and then your vendors get paid. Not the flip side of that. Um, so <coughs> negotiate with them and always aim higher. Say, you know, if, if you want 30-day uh, payment terms, tell them 35 days and then settle at 30 days, you know. And maybe even if you're not having cash flow issues right now, always have that in the back of your head when you're when you're getting into a relationship with the vend with the new vendor. Just know that maybe that will be you at one point. Maybe you're going to start offering bigger uh, design build jobs in the future, and um, you'll you'll need to negotiate things like that. So it's just something to think about and. Um, make it like a win-win relationship. You know, um, if you, you know, extend my uh, terms to, to 35 days, I'll, I'll be able to purchase more from you because I'll be able to generate more revenue. Yeah. Things and, like and, and even if you plan to grow regardless, you can still use it as leverage. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and, and you, and you can even give them exact numbers. So if you guys are looking to grow anyway by, let's say, 50% in 2022, and you know that, that you're going to be purchasing at least, let's say, $50,000 more at this specific landscape supply store, you can use that as leverage. Um, you know, and it's better to do it now, maybe even potentially before you have to, in a situation where it's a win-win um, scenario. Um, you know, but it's, uh, um, you know, it'll, it'll be something that'll really pay off in the, in the long run. And he, here are some, some, some more tips. So I, I understand for many of you that um, work for that, that do a lot of commercial work. Sometimes it could be tough to, to negotiate, right. And in the circumstance where maybe you're not in the best situation when it comes to terms, understand that then it becomes increasingly more important to in, to to have increased profit for that job because if you remember that other slide before where the profit right where that was 17% and then the net working capital was was lower and that net profit being above that working capital that helped to um, basically make sure that you had enough cash to, to fund the business, right? So if, if your um, terms aren't as good as you want, right? Or if you um, are, are not receiving the money fast enough, you, you have to make up for that in your net profit. 
Um, make sure that you have a specific individual within your company being very cash conscious and on and really um, you know looking into your AR, AP, and all of those functions. Um, and I know that um, in order to stay stay competitive in your market, you know you may have to pay commissions, bonuses. Um, pay for performance, all of those different items, but make sure that make sure that you understand your financials, you understand your cash flow um, before you commit to anything major. <laughs> so it's it's always better to start conservative with that. Um, don't don't necessarily just base it off of your profit. Um, you know you want to you you can base it off of your profit, but make sure that if you base it off your profit, that you understand the effect that it has on your cash flow. Um, and make sure that your administrative team is on the same page as your operations team, because each plays a role, um, you know, when, when it comes to cash flow, your admin team collecting money, um, AP people in operations that are purchasing the material, right? So it goes both ways. Yeah. Make sure that everyone knows within your company, the, the importance of this, um, you know, cause Companies don't fail because of, um, you know, well, I would say com companies fail um, because of cash flow problems all the time. And yeah. I don't want any of you guys here to <laughs> um, run into that problem. And I know a lot of you are creating budgets this time of year and you're allotting certain um, money into for, for certain activities in 2022. But understand that, um, you know, you want to ultimately know that if you're spending money that you're getting a return on that money and only spend it if you need to. Um, so just, just keep that in mind. And it's important also to stay consistent and focused, right, when it, when it comes to cash flow. Um, when many of you have started your business you were very focused on cash flow profits right it was it was very serious you you knew that if you spent you know three thousand dollars that it was specifically for this item and i was going to produce this or else i couldn't basically do this right um so you want to take that same focus if you're looking to start a new location or a new division right and understand that if you have an established company and you're looking to build out that that new division, um, you you have to um, know that you may not be able to put in your your sweat equity into that new division, right? Because when you started your business, you may not have been paying um, yourself or not not taking dis distributions because. Um, you you were still in a very early part of your company and you were putting in that that sweat equity right so un understand that when you start that that new division and and the effect that that will have on on your cash flow right um, and just just be careful um, you know on adding administrative salaries um, and make sure that you're holding those people just as accountable as you are your direct labor because they do have a responsibility to help the company produce more, not just in revenue though, in, in profit as well, right? Because a salesman can, can be great, you know, at increasing revenue, but is he getting the wrong jobs that your people in the field can't perform, right? And they're inefficient at, therefore it's not increasing net profit. You're just increasing revenue. So you want to use net profit as your real um, KPI for that. Yeah, that's why with with our clients we we calculate um, for them revenue per employee, but also net profit per employee. It's really important um, metric. So here we have an example of a cash flow forecast, um, and we do this for our clients. Uh, I'm going to go into it a little bit um, today, but I do have. Um, a webinar where we really focused on this and then also explained how to calculate everything. Again, it's on YouTube cycle CPA. So if you want to 
learn how to make uh, a cash flow forecast for your business, um, I recommend you look at that. Um, but so uh, what is a cash flow forecast? So it's forecasting uh, the next uh, six to 12 months worth of cash inflows. So cash sales. Um, it could also be cash proceeds. So I know a lot of us got the EIDL money, SBA money, that that would also be included in there if, if you're expecting to receive some sort of cash inflow like that. And then um, also your cash outflow. So that's your direct costs, you know, your labor, field labor, materials, and then your overhead costs. But it also includes your balance sheet items too. And that includes your owner's distributions, what you take out of the business that's in the balance sheet. It's nowhere on the profit and loss statement. And then also your loan payments. So again, that's on your balance sheet, right? So <clears throat> I'm going to show you guys here uh, quickly that we have cash basis revenue. That is going to come from your P&L on a cash basis. You're not going to pull accrual. <clears throat> and then if you have any cash inflows that's on your balance sheet uh, from loans, you know, again, like the EIDL. And then also if you have any owner's investment, if you put money into the business occasionally as well. Then you yeah. have all and, these other and, items that we spoke about uh, from your profit and loss. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I just want to make sure that everyone understands that. Um, and again, I think a lot of people are, are very familiar with the profit and loss, right? Where you have your expenses and then your net income. And that does have an effect on, on your cash flow, right? But it's also important to know that there's some of those balance sheet items as Carl is going over that has a huge influence over cash. <coughs> I'm sorry, Carla, go ahead. Yeah, so here's your balance sheet, your loan payments, um, and owner's distributions, like I mentioned before. So it makes up um, some elements here, your cash at the beginning of, your of, of the period, and that comes from your bank statement. That comes straight from your bank statements there. And then cash inflow, like we mentioned here, it's in the blue and then your cash outflow, and then you have a projection of what is going to be my ending balance in my bank account. And that's what we we project for our clients is, okay, you could expect this, um, this amount at the end of January, February in, to be in your bank. And so the reason why a cash flow forecast is very important is because it helps you make those decisions as you grow and scale your business. Can I hire another employee? Should I buy that truck in June or should I wait till July? Um, sh should I hire another uh, production manager? And how much is that production in a manager going to generate in revenues? And then we calculate, okay, is that feasible or not for you to do? Yes or no, right? Um, things like, should I purchase a truck in June or July, really make a difference in your, in your, in your cash flow. And you want to know when to make those decisions. <clears throat> so there are some assumptions within, because um, the landscaping industry is, is seasonal, right? Um, for the most part, there are assumptions that we make. So, <clears throat> In, in the cash flow forecast, we may have different assumptions. Uh, like I mentioned before, are you going to increase your pricing? Are you going to add staff, equipment, things like that? Um, again, because it is a seasonal business, we have to use historical information as well. So what, um, what uh, cash revenue did you have last January? And actually the January before that too. Because the reason why you want to have month by month, we, we use this for our clients because historical information tells us a lot about what is going to happen this, this year as well. But also looking at um, the, the seasonality of things and the trend. Um, and we, so we take historical information and then we also uh, couple that with or marry that with 
what your current growth trend is. So what are you currently doing? What what has the past six months look like for you on a cash flow basis? So we take historical and current, marry that, and then you come up with an accurate cash flow forecast. Um, again, it's an estimate. Um, so this is an example of what our cash flow looks like for our clients. Um, <clears throat> And again, if, if you want to know the exact calculations and all of that, feel free to visit uh, Cycle CPA uh, YouTube. I go over that there. But we have um, our total cash inflows here. Um, but again, we start with the beginning balance. So uh, what was the ending balance in your bank account, your actual ending balance? And then we forecast the cash inflows, the direct cost outflows, your overhead cost. <clears throat> and then here are those balance sheet items that are not on your profit and loss that we never think about. Um, so owner's distributions, things like, okay, how much are we taking out in, in uh, owner's distribution? How much am I paying for my F-350s? Things of that nature, your loans. Um, and then that gives us a total cash outflow. So if I take my total um, direct cost, my overhead cost, and then my balance sheet items, I get 120,000 here. And that gives me my net cash flow. What is net cash flow? That's my total cash inflow of 135. That's how much I think I'm going to have in cash uh, sales for that month. It's going to be deposited in my bank account. And I'm Actually, my cash outflows are going to be 120. So 135 minus 120 gives me a net cash increase of $15,000 for that period. So that's a good month for them. And so my closing balance should be around 41,000. <coughs> so something I want to point out, you see here how their net is negative. That means um, that means that your cash inflow, so your sales are less than your expenses. So your expenses um, are more than you, what you're going to receive in that period. That's why it's important, like Joe said, that you match your sales with your expenses or else you're going to get something like this, a negative net cash flow for that month. But thankfully, this, this company had enough cushion in the bank that they ended up with 50 anyway, because their beginning balance was 54,000. And so even though their net cash flow for that month was negative 3,600, they still were okay because they have that cash cushion that we talked about before. So when you when you get when you start getting these negatives, that means your again, that means your cash sales, your money coming in is not matching your money coming out. That means that don't, you need to close the gap. And that's by leveraging your AP with your vendors, sending invoice reminders, being better about AER, things of that nature. That's what's going to help all of this. So because we have a projection for our clients, okay, this is going to be your ending balance. Right underneath that, we make some scenarios. Okay, I want to add on a production manager. Okay, this is going to be their salary. <coughs> this is how much gener um, revenue they should start generating. Um, and then we come up with a pro other projected closing balance to see, are you able to afford that? Are you going to need a loan? Should we not do that right now? Yeah, and, and I think it's also interesting to see on that bottom line where you have your closing balance, right? And as I mentioned before, having access um, access cash um, within, within the business. So let's say if this company, instead of $41,000, um, $385, let's say they had $141,000, right? And then the next month they, they, they had, you know, over $100,000. That makes it... You know, as as the business owner, yeah, you see, you know, your cash going down in that third and fourth month, but um, you know, 
it it just creates that that complacency, right? So it's important to b- break things down here, break things down where we had went over it with the net working capital um, to to really show you how efficient you're being, right? Because in in this third month, when your net cash flow is it's three thousand six hundred eleven. That can mean a couple things, you know, or are, are your people being lazy when it comes to a AR, um, you know, so it's, it's definitely something to focus on and then, you know, have a plan, right? So, um, you know, I, I think that some, some of you may be in a position where, um, especially this time of year, um, and hopefully it's, it's just a seasonal problem, right? But, um, where you may not have the cash flow levels that that you want, um, but it's important to understand that in order to get out of that point, you may have to change or maybe even maintain certain levels in order to get out of that. Right. So you 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 may have to increase your marketing spend when it may be hard for you but it's the way for you to um, get to healthy profit in order to increase your cash flow. Or you may have to keep on a, a, a key team member because it may be way too expensive if, if he did go, right? And you have to recruit and find, find someone else. Um, you know, and I think that businesses that are able, you know, especially some of our clients that that are able to maintain cash flow levels throughout the entire year and stay in offense they're able to um, take advantage of opportunities whether it's acquiring a company or um, keeping team members you know so <laughs> which is very important especially um, you know in this this current market um, and you know it Having that cash flow forecast that Carla was going over, it it helps to show points where you can be confident if you do want to grow this year, you know, and if I want to ramp up my marketing where I may not see that net profit and cash flow um, improve until maybe three, four months out, um, you know, how, you know, am, am I actually okay to, to make that move and ramp up the marketing? Um, so that's that that's something that that the cash flow forecast really helps to show, and it's really the purpose of it. Um, and then, yeah. and then it's- another thing here is, you know, looking at, you know, when it comes to being in a low cash flow time, um, it may be um, kind of easy to to only focus on trying to be lean and cutting expenses and different things, but you, you have to be very careful because you can be cutting expenses and getting rid of things that are essential and it puts you in even a bigger hole because what happens if you put yourself in a circumstance where you can't generate that same profit that you were before, right? As you're cutting expenses, now those expenses that you do have left, now those make up more of a percentage to your revenue anyway. So are you, you know, you have to be very, very careful with that move. Um, so those are a couple of points there to take away. Yeah. And, you know, I have seen circumstances where with, with my clients that, you know, it's, <clears throat> it's all about, you know, sometimes it's all about, it's an, it's a numbers, it's really a numbers game where if you're low on cash flow, you need to get more bids out so you can make more uh, cash inflow and net cash flow. And, you know, if you have a certain profitability goal and a lot of your, your bids are not being approved, that just means you need to put out more bids so that way you can get more bids in and then generate more cash flow. Sometimes it's, it's worth the investment in advertising and marketing and putting your bids out there, but quality bids, not bids where you'll, you'll get it. uh, You'll get the job just because you're going to be making a low profit margin. And then you're back at square one again. And it's just a recurring 
cycle where you're you're cash flow poor. So it's just something to think about. <clears throat> and yeah, so does anybody have um, some some questions here for for us? We have a few minutes to. Um, I know somebody said that um, we you know we are going to send this out uh, this this video out in an email to everybody just in case you didn't catch um, everything. So. <coughs> Yeah, thank you guys for joining us here. I hope you hope you got a lot of value from this. Um, so definitely leave some some questions there in the comments if you have any before we go here. I like how you guys are like helping each other out in the in the comments here and giving each other tips. I, I like that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have a lot of people asking for benchmarks, uh, design, install, maintenance. We we do benchmark our, our clients' uh, profit and loss and balance sheet to the services they provide. Um, but we do have a webinar where we went over key performance indicators and benchmarks. Again, you can find that on the YouTube uh, channel, Cycle CPA. So I encourage you all to, to do that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and... and Amy had mentioned, how do you um, share like the sales target goals with, with your staff? So, you know, we're here in 2022. I think it's, it's important to, you know, make sure that they have a basic understanding of the financials, but break it down into terms that they, that apply to them. Yeah. So how many projects do, do, do they have to complete? How many jobs do they have to do right. I think that's that's what would make it easier for them to see, um, you know, t you know, and how to how to reach those sales goals. You know, because yeah. it it does get a little, um, I guess, very. Uh, it's it's not very specific, right? If you say, "All, all right, team, I want to grow by two hundred thousand this year," <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. yeah. but you know, what does that actually break down to? Um, yeah. You know, how many you jobs? Need to, you and need to communicate that in, in in direct labor hours. How much hours do you need to sell? Yeah. How how many? So that's when that's when your revenue per per hour comes into play. So um, if if you want to sell X amount in, in services, what is your revenue per hour? And then divide that, and and then get your revenue and divide that by your. Uh, direct labor hours and you get the amount of hours that you'll need to produce the amount of sales. And so you can communicate with your uh, sales staff and, and you, you communicate with them on selling hours, not, not, you know, $200,000 in sales. They're not going to going to really understand that. Yeah. And, and getting a little bit more, more broad with that, you can look at the total amount of contracts, or um, jobs that you completed in 2021 and what was your total revenue, right? And see what, what was your revenue per, per job. And you know that if you want to hit, let's say, um, an additional $200,000, right? You want to add $200,000 to your business and each project um, was $10,000, then you know that you'll have to complete 20 jobs, you know, and that, that helps to show it, you know, and if, if you know that, that, that you needed, let's say three employees in 2021 to complete those jobs, then you know that if you add, you know, that certain amount, you can see what the ratio is for, for what, what you'll have to add. And I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Joe. So um, if you guys want to find out more about uh, Cycle CPA. We have a Facebook group where we actually post every day tips and tricks. It's a great community. Um, the Facebook group is called Landscaping Accountant, so feel free to join. Um, and also, uh, you can visit our our um, 
our website, cyclecpa.com, and find out more about um, us on there. Yeah, and we uh, we have the basic part. Like I, I see a lot of people asking about like the pricing for like the bookkeeping and accounting services. We have that on on in cyclecpa.com. Um, you know, and pricing. Yeah. you can put your info in the, uh, um, on the website and we'll, we'll give you a call tomorrow, um, you know, to go over that if that's something you guys are interested in. But, um, it was, it was really nice, uh, I guess spending, spending the evening with you guys. I hope, yeah. uh, hope you made it through this without <laughs> falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> talking about numbers. What do, what do you mean? I love talking about numbers. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, yeah, no, um, it was it was nice it was nice seeing you all here so um yeah have a nice night thank you thank you all right, guys see ya um,